since I'm talking about that, I am a person who, is, who has social anxiety. Let me confess that this is not a very comfortable experience for me right now. So, okay, so self-expression is an expression of our inner thoughts, feelings, and ideas. It is something that uh, allows us to distinguish us from others. It, is re it reflects our individuality, it reflects our autonomy. Uh, so, uh, in that case, self-expression uh, is very beneficial, uh, uh, and a lack of self-expression leads to a lot of negative consequences to our mental health. So self-expression is a very significant aspect of our behavior. Uh, it, it is very important for our development and well-being. Uh, so then, why is it that people are not able to express themselves? There are a lot of people out there who cannot express themselves, despite the benefits associated with self-expression. Uh, so there are certain characteristics that people have that inhibits their self-expression. So there's introversion. Introverts are people who, who, who have a lot of difficulty in expressing themselves in front of others because they get very stimulated in social situations, uh, which makes them easily drained out. So they prefer to keep to themselves. And because of that, they have very limited opportunities for self-expression. Then shyness is uh, social inhibition. Uh, people who are shy, they, uh, they are very fearful in social situations. And because of that, they tend to avoid interacting with others, uh, which of course then does not give them opportunities to express themselves properly. Then social anxiety uh, has, involves a very irrational fear of embarrassment a fear of being negatively scrutinized by others. And in social situations, they become very fearful, they become highly anxious. And because of that, they start avoiding uh, social situations. This, again, uh, inhibits their, their self-expression. Uh, then trait loneliness. Trait, lo trait loneliness involves traits that inhibit social interaction. So, for example, somebody may be melancholic, somebody may be timid, which does not allow them to connect well with, with others. And irrespective of the situation, they feel lonely. They feel very lonely no matter how, no matter what the situation might be. Uh, and again, because of that, of course, they are not able to express themselves pro properly. They, are, they always have this unfulfilled need for intimacy. Then depression. Uh, depression involves uh, sadness, uh, low energy, uh, automatic negative thoughts and hopelessness. So, and because of this, people who are depressed, they tend to live a very isolated life. Uh, and because they live an isolated life, they get very little opportunity to express themselves uh, with others. Uh, and if I make a confession, all of these characteristics are, are associated with me. So this is, I'm talking about myself in some way. Apart from these characteristics, uh, uh, what has been found in urban settings, is that uh, people are very distant, have become very distant from each other. And this is because people have been focusing a lot on their uh, individual goals instead of the relationship-oriented goals. Because of this then, uh, people do not experience uh, uh, social support, uh, and uh, they feel alienated from others. They have a low sense of community. Uh, they feel very alienated from others. and. Due to that alienation, they experience a sense of emptiness and meaninglessness. So, so, so they are not able to express themselves properly. So especially is what has been found in the past few years, people in urban settings are uh, living a very isolated life. They are too much involved in their work, but are not being finding enough time to build proper relationships. So now when, uh, when there are people who are not able to express themselves properly, and when people don't have anyone around them to express them, them, themselves properly, then uh, social media then becomes a very helpful platform. That's because cyberspace on, in itself, uh, it has certain features that uh, allow self-expression with a lot of comfort. So when we're online, we experience what is called a heightened private sense of self-awareness and a reduced public sense of self-awareness. 
So when we're online, uh, we are feeling less conscious of our surroundings uh, due to social distance and a sense of comfort. And that is causing a heightened sense of private self-awareness. It, and this is what is giving greater access to our inner thoughts and feelings. Uh, and at the same time, because of the so social distance, uh, because of not being conscious of our surroundings, there is very little evaluation apprehension. And there is no fear of being negatively judged by others. Uh, and this is what is leading to a reduced public sense of self-awareness. Now, the social psychologist Adam Johnson, uh, he, through his research, he found out that when a heightened private sense of self-awareness self and a reduced public sense of self-awareness are combined together, then that leads to a lot of self-disclosure, which cannot be seen uh, quite often in face-to-face -face situations. So this aspect of cyberspace is allowing people to express themselves a lot more as compared to face-to-face -face interactions. Then uh, what has been found, uh, the computer-mediated communication expert Joseph Walter, he suggests that uh, a feature of cyberspace is that it involves hyper-personal communication, that we are, talk, we are expressing too much about ourselves in cyberspace. So because of asynchronous communication, that is allowing us to take our time in responding to others. The responses are very well thought out, and we have a lot of control over our uh, or whatever we are trying to convey. And this psychological comfort that, is, that, is, uh, that we are getting because of this, it becomes very easy for us to reveal ourselves in front of others. So, and again, much easier as compared to face-to-face -face interactions. Similar to this, there's this concept given by the cyber psychologist John Suler. Uh, it's called online disinhibition effect. And this suggests that when we are, whenever we are online, uh, we are very less restrained. Uh, we loosen up, and this helps us to express ourselves in a much better way. Uh, and it has been found that when, when online, people are revealing a lot more personal information about themselves, which they again may not be able to do in their face-to-face -face interactions. Then uh, uh, cyberspace also allows us to reveal a lot more about our true self. The concept of true self was given up, given by the uh, humanistic psychologist Carl Rogers, and true self includes aspects of, of ourselves which we are not able to fully express in our social life. And uh, the clinical psychologist and the personality psychologist Sherry Turkle, she su suggests that cyberspace provides an opportunity to, uh, to, uh, for people to reveal their inner conceptions. So the features of cyberspace are allowing us to reveal our true self. And usually, individuals are highly motiva motivated to reveal their true self because we all want others to know about ourselves, aspects that we are not able to reveal to others. And when being, whenever we are online, this motivation to reveal our true self gets enhanced. So in that way, if we look at these features of cyberspace, it shows that we can express a lot more compared to face-to-face -face interaction. And this becomes very helpful for people who actually cannot express themselves in face-to-face -face interactions. For such people, then social media becomes a very a platform in which they can express themselves with a lot of comfort. Uh, now I'll be talking about three specific social media platforms that have been used a lot for self-expression. And these are the three platforms that I have also been using a lot in the past few years. First is blogging. Are there any bloggers out here? Anybody who blogs? I can't see any hands raised. Maybe it's just a little, little dark also. But uh, blogging is something that has become very popular in the past decade. Uh, on, and blogging is, of course, a computer-mediated communication platform in which blog bloggers are representing themselves in different ways. So blogging involves asynchronous communication. Uh, it allows a lot of self-disclosure because of the comfort. Uh, and people are able to share their inner thoughts and feelings on their blogs. A lot of times it has been found that there are bloggers who are sharing their uh, personal struggles on their blogs. So people are talking about their experiences related to, say, loneliness and depression, or even more severe psychological disorders like borderline personality disorder or even schizophrenia. So when people are sharing their personal struggles on their blog, it allows them to get a lot of social emotional support from others. And it is improving their social bonding, which uh, enhances their well-being, and it, it, it allows them to experience a lot of positive effect. 
uh, <clears throat> and it provides a platform for, for people to connect with others. Now, when I say that uh, self-expression through blogging, it does not always mean that it has to be a personal blog. Even educational and informational blogs can be used for self-expression. So this is something that I've been doing. I've been uh, blogging for nearly 15 years now. Uh, and I say this, that I've been blogging from the time when, when blogging was not cool. When I started blogging, people used to say that, what rubbish are you doing? You're just wasting time on, on, your, on, your, on your laptop. Uh, but I've been, uh, the reason why I started to blog, uh, uh, there are two main reasons. Firstly, I wanted to uh, spread awareness about psychological issues. And uh, I also then wanted to share things about, uh, share about things that, are, that, that I find very exciting, that are very interesting to me. So when I realized that I don't have people around me to talk to, so I thought blogging is the next best, best thing to do. So I write about psychological issues that I find to be very relevant. Now when, now, when I'm doing that, uh, in many ways I'm revealing aspects of myself. So if I'm writing about any psychological issue, I'm incorporating my own personal experiences into it. Uh, so if I'm writing about introversion, if I'm talking, if I'm writing about uh, loneliness or shyness, I'm using my own experiences and trying to express that in a more general way, but it is revealing aspects of myself. So even though I have an educational informational blog, I'm still indulging a lot uh, in self-expression through my blogs. So in this way, blogs are seen as a very powerful medium of self-expression. Now, in the past few years, Twitter is also has come up where people use it for self-expression. And it can be easily used for our mobile phones, so sharing our uh, views, our perspectives, our feelings uh, can be done very easily in quick time. Uh, and uh, because of that, then, people are able to talk about themselves in a very uh, comfortable manner. In the past few years, also, we have seen that Twitter has been used for social, social political movements, so the Me Too movement or the Black Lives Matter, that has been very effective through Twitter. Uh, I have been using Twitter to share my psychological ideas. Uh, I have, and that has led me to interact with a lot of well-known psychologists in different parts of the world. So I've been using Twitter to connect with other people, and it has helped me a lot uh, to reveal aspects of myself, to reveal my identity, my interests. So in that sense, Twitter has been, has been a very useful social media platform for me, specifically, to express myself. Then we have Instagram. Instagram, of course, is, has become very popular these days, especially with, with young people. And Instagram is a very creative representation of ourselves uh, because it's using pictures and short videos uh, so it becomes, it's a very creative way to, to talk about ourselves. And uh, it expresses aspects which may perhaps not be able to be expressed through words. And that way it becomes a very powerful medium. Uh, and it is revealing, uh, it has been found that it reveals deeper layers of our mind. And a single image uh, is reflecting a lot. Uh, and when we uh, use captions with pictures, then that gives a lot more meaning to it. But even if we, it is not accompanying with any, any text, any writing, it, despite that, even a single visual image can be very powerful. So if I say that, if I'm taking a picture of something and sharing it, it is not just because it is visually appealing. There is something within me that has made me caught attention to something, which I take a picture of it. it I could relate some, with it. And it is perhaps revealing something about my mind, which, which in the first place I went ahead and took a picture of it. So in that way, uh, sharing pictures is, uh, is actually reflecting the identity and interests of the individual. And every, every picture does that. So if you are taking a picture, it is not just a random picture. It is revealing a lot about ourselves. So over the years, what I've been doing, uh, yeah, I don't have too many followers. Hopefully, this will change after this. Uh, so uh, what I've been doing is I try to express myself through pictures and captions in a very vague and abstract manner. And uh, I, I find this to be very creative. It, it, it gives a lot of positive effect within me when I do this. So it, it arouses a lot of interest within me. 
Apart from that, uh, I also have another Instagram page in which I talk about simple and brief descriptions of psychological terms. And that is also reflecting my interest. So when I'm sharing this, I'm revealing aspects of myself. So over the years, uh, these three platforms have become a very useful for self-expression, especially for people who cannot express themselves properly. So for someone like me who has always been very hesitant, uh, social media has given me that platform where I can talk about myself, reveal aspects of my personality in a, in, with a lot of comfort. So it can be said that social media has given voice to my voicelessness. Apart from that, uh, not just online. So when I'm expressing myself, it is, it is giving me a sense of confidence. And that confidence has led me to go out in face-to-face -face situations and interact with others. It has enhanced my communication ability. So, so being a very hesitant person, being able to express myself online, it has helped me to express myself in face-to-face -face situations. So perhaps that is what eventually led me to get into teaching, uh, where almost every day I have to talk with a group of people. Uh, uh, it, and, and over the years, I've been delivering a lot of lectures. I've been conducting workshops. I've even now started my podcast, which something was unimaginable for me some years back. And now, after all of this, today I am uh, giving this TEDx, TEDx talk in front of everybody. So I think if I can do it, anybody else out there can also do this. Thank you very much.